Hello everyone, this is Joe from Scarecrow Joe's Studio. Welcome back to part four of our paper mache bats tutorial. Um, I just want to quickly thank everybody who has recently subscribed to our channel. Um, it really means a lot. I uh, really appreciate all of you, everybody who has subscribed. Um, and if, again, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. We have a lot more uh, videos coming up for paper mache tutorials, queen related paper mache tutorials. Check out the channel because there's a bunch of stuff that's already on there. Um, but after we finish up completely these bats, well, we'll start filming a tutorial on how to create what I call a pumpkin reaper. And it's going to look something like this. so that's going to be coming up next sorry I don't actually have that uh, sculpture present to show you I did end up selling that but I'm gonna be making another one and that you could follow along with uh, if you're interested but going back to this one this guy uh, he's completely ready for us to uh, apply the cloth and that's the first thing that we're gonna do on this guy um, and then we're gonna go ahead and start sculpting out our other guy here that has the cardboard wings so that's coming up right now all right really quickly let's go over tools and materials needed for this section of part four um, obviously you're going to need your bats uh, both of them if you created both of them um, for the bat that we're going to be applying the wings to you're going to need a pair of scissors you're going to need your cloth uh, I just have an old white cloth here, thin material. Uh, it's a sheet that I picked up uh, for a couple bucks at the local thrift store. You're going to need some paper mache paste. Um, now all my paste is is just flour and water and you're going to want to mix that to a thin pancake batter consistency. You're going to need, if you want to tint your cloth before applying uh, it onto your bat skeleton here uh, you'll need some paint um, you can either use acrylic paint or you can use latex paint whatever you prefer I'm gonna do a tint of my paper mache paste using a combination of this is a nutmeg brown this is a, a black and then a gray and we'll see how that ends up being tinted um, you're also going to need some paper mache clay um, and and that's I think that's pr pretty much what you're going to need uh, to start out with here on this uh, section um, now as you can see before I move on and start applying cutting the cloth and mixing the paint into my paste there I want to point out that something that I did off camera was I went in and I applied uh, my paper mache clay to these areas where these joints meet so basically where I applied or I connected the bendable wire to this longer wire here I reinforced it after my strip mache on there had dried with my paper mache clay and I did that on both uh, both wings up here as well as around the joint of where the shoulders are so where that big piece of wire I bulked up with uh, newspaper strips there connect because I want this to be very very strong and as you can see it's a little wobbly and that's fine um, after we apply the cloth it'll still be a little wobbly um, but it should dry really really solid and hard um, the other thing that I want to point out is that I have on my table here a piece of uh, corrugated cardboard a thick piece of cardboard here when I apply when I apply my cloth wings to this it's going to help me to easily transport this whole piece on top of this cardboard outside into the Sun um, I'm gonna let it sit all day into the Sun 
so that it will dry completely and solid. The sun will aid in that drying process very quickly with the cloth. So that's what I suggest. If you're not working outside, work on top of a piece of cardboard about the same size as your bat so that you can easily transport that without trying to pick it up while it's wet and kind of floppy so you'll avoid any kind of catastrophes that may happen. All right, so let's get started on, first thing that I'm gonna do is tint my uh, paper mache mix here. All right, tinting my mix. Oh, the other thing that I have that I didn't show is I have a paint stir stick uh, to help me mix that up. So I'm gonna start with uh, my nutmeg brown. First I wanna, and make sure that your paste doesn't have any lumps in it. So if you need to use a hand mixer, uh, use a hand mixer. You don't want it lumpy at all. Um, and it, as you can see, this is very thin. But by adding some of this paint here, I'm going to start little bits at a time. By adding the paint, it'll thicken uh, my, uh, my paste. Or it should anyway. So I'm starting with the brown. The reason that I prefer tinting um, the paste before applying the cloth, a, like a color that, that you are going to kind of want your wings to be, um, it's just for that reason. It automatically is going to give it a tint, and then when you go over it with paint after it dries, uh, you won't have to work so hard at getting it a color that you, you want. And it's starting to incorporate, my paint is, as you can see, it's starting to incorporate into my, uh, into my paste here. Might have been better if I used a hand mixer, but this is fine. It just takes a little while longer. So that's kind of like I got it to like a, uh, a very pale coffee color at this point. If that's kind of what you want your base color for your wings then stop right there and use that color. But I think I'm just gonna kind of experiment. I'm gonna add a little black to it. That should darken it a little bit. I'm getting there, I'm gonna add a little bit more black. And again, you can also use latex paint for this. This is kind of similar to Monster Mud. The only difference with Monster Mud is that um, it's a combination of drywall joint compound and latex paint. And it hardens really well when you dip cloth or any kind of fabric in it. But because we're not using large amounts of fabric, it's a smaller piece, uh, two separate pieces that we're gonna drape on there. Uh, I'm not using monster mud for that. Well, that has darkened it up quite a bit from that original, like, uh, pale coffee color. I think I'm going to go with that and not add the gray, actually. Make sure when you're doing this, you're doing this in a space because it will splatter. As you can see, I'm getting, I'm getting splatter all over my little backdrop curtain there, which I don't really care about. That's why it's in my little studio. But uh, if you're working indoors and you're working around stuff that you do care about, keep that in mind because it will splatter. All right, I think that's pretty good as far as it being mixed well enough. All right. So, first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of just drape, get that out of the way, kind of see, this is not going to be perfect, it doesn't need to be, because we're going to drape it, and then we're going to trim it. So, just kind of spreading it out.
You could use a marker and mark around the areas. Um, do leave some fabric. So I don't know if you could tell, but there's like one of the ribs of the wing there. Do leave some of the fabric to overlap those areas. But you can go in and kind of measure out where you want these different, or where you want to make your cuts. I'm just taking my marker here. And on the tips of these little wings here, um, I don't want to cover this in cloth. Those are, those are going to represent like his little, the little hooks that they have on the ends of their wings that help them grip onto things and maneuver. I don't want that to be cloth. I'm not going to cloth that over because I'm going to create that with clay. So I know that I don't want that area. So I'm just kind of marking and I'm going to leave a good amount of space. But I'm leaving, I'm going to leave enough room here. There's my bat shoulder. This is where the bat body is. That's where the foot is, I could tell. You can't really see that, but that's where it is. Come down here and I'm just going to cut. So that's where the tip of that is. My other one is down here, so. It's more like this here. I could tell my other bony wings or, or uh, my other bone that's in there is right over here. So I'm just going to kind of, and I'm just going to cut around like about, about right there. Again, does not need to be perfect. <clears throat> We'll see how well I did this. See if I need to go back and do it again. Let's see how well I managed this. say that's pretty good. Part of the cloth is going to be hooked on to the upper part of his leg where I'm holding that right there. All right, I'm going to set that aside. That's going to be for my left wing. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my right wing, the other wing here. Um, place my piece of fabric on there, kind of measure it, cut it out, and then we'll be ready to start applying, dipping and applying the cloth. All right, cloth wing shape for the right side, cloth wing shape for the left side. Um, again, they're not perfect. They don't need to be. It's fine. Um, so I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to do I'm going to do the right wing first, or I'm sorry, I'm going to do the left side first. Basically, what I need to do here, some of my paint has separated a little bit, but that's fine. I, I dip the whole cloth in there. I want to make sure you get it pretty saturated. Get it saturated. 
make sure it's all completely dipped into there and then just kind of use your fingers and squeegee it out a bit so it's not such a goopy sloppy mess all right once you get that uh, saturated next thing to do is basically drape it over your wing looking at my uh, where my marks are That's where my little hook is. This is the hardest part. I want my bony wings structure underneath it to show through. So I'm just kind of draping it over in the back of it. starting to take shape. This takes a little practice and patience. So if you don't get it right the first time, um, don't beat yourself up over it. Right, something like that. When this dries, it should retain that shape. Um, I did move the camera over. Just so you can see that. I draped it, some of it is, going, is on the body here, and I draped a portion of it over the top part of the little leg. Um, we're going to, after these dry, of course, we'll be doing some more work when we flip them over because the bony structure on the bottom, we're going to take some cloth and on the, on the back side of each of these bony pieces, we're just going to apply a thin layer of cloth over that. And then of course, after this dries, um, and we flip it over, we do the back side of the wings with a piece of cloth on the bony structure. Um, we'll start the clay work. The clay work is going to come over this a bit here. And we will texture out our clay so that it looks like fur. And it'll kind of blend in with the wings. So you're not going to have this fabric line. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing with my other side of the wing. All right, so... Something that I completely forgot about is that that piece of cardboard, these wings, if they're laying flat onto that piece of cardboard when they dry, they'll stick to that raw piece of cardboard there. So what I did was I put a piece of plastic sheeting. You can use a trash bag cut open and layer that over your piece of cardboard because this will not stick to the plastic. Um, it might a little bit, but not, not like it will stick to the cardboard because the cardboard is very porous, whereas the plastic is not. So that's what I suggest. Don't lay it on a piece of raw cardboard like that when you're doing the wings. All right, so there you have it. Not too bad. I mean, it's not perfect by any means. Um, but after they do dry, 
uh, we're going to go in and we're going to cut in along these areas here, shape them out. Um, you can try to do that when it's wet. I don't like doing that. I think it's easier to do it when it's dry. Um, draped over a little bit around the legs here. Um, I've got a pretty decent definition of the bony structure on the wings. Um, this is good enough for me. Um, I do even like the color and how that turned out. I think that's pretty cool. May not even need to put any more paint on it really. Um, except for, you know, around these edges where you can see my uh, red Sharpie that I used. That's not a big deal. Some of that stuff's going to get cut out anyway when I go and cut out the shapes better. For good measure, I'm going to go ahead and use some of my uh, paint and paste mixture. And I'm going to brush on around these areas where I really want it to stick. Make sure they're really saturated. Especially around um, this body area where it connects and to my little legs here. And when this dries, it should give it the appearance of like a leathery looking that wing. Right, there you have it. That is one way of shaping and applying cloth wings to give your bat the appearance of those leathery, uh, more realistic looking bat wings. So this is going to go outside. I'm going to take it right up there. Uh, with my piece of cardboard with the uh, plastic sheet over that. I'm going to take it upstairs, put it in the sun, and uh, may only be, uh, I'm thinking maybe six hours or so. They might be good enough here to flip them over and uh, apply the strips on the back of it. But I am going to make sure that these are completely dry before I move on to do anything else with them. All right, guys, this actually did not take um, as long to dry as I thought it was. I was thinking maybe six hours in full sun. Um, this thing was dry within a couple of hours. Completely dry. Take a look at the back. So we still have some work to do here. We're going to take our cloth, uh, cut out some pieces that are going to go over all of these pieces that are showing in the back here. Uh, we will dip them in our uh, mixture of the paste and uh, paint. Um, but I'm pleased with that. That came out pretty good. The only thing that I don't really like is the color that it dried to. So um, I am going to have to go back in, of course, and uh, do some repainting on the wings. But first things first. Um, first thing that I want to do is shape these wings a little bit more. And the way I'm going to do that is by cutting out some half circle type shapes in here. Uh, to give it more interest and make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, you can go ahead and do that freehand if you want. Just take your scissors and go for it. But um, I'm not that talented. And I know myself I'm probably going to end up, you know, messing it up at some point. So what I'm going to do here is I just want to, with my marker again, I'm going to go in. And, I mean, you can make this as dramatic as you want it to be, obviously. But I'm going to go in with my marker. I think I want to cut... 
cut that out just a little bit higher up in here just sort of like that but it attached really well I'm I'm happy with it this one over here Something like that. As you can tell, this side and this side aren't exactly even, but that's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, I'm not worried about that very much. I'm just going to take my scissors and start trimming. And it cuts uh it cuts really easy if you have a good, you know, sharp pair of scissors. Not a big deal cutting this out at all with this cloth like that. Um, you can do, obviously, you can do any kind of pattern that you want. If you want these jagged, cut jagged uh, pieces in there, get creative. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Now those look more like bat wings. I'm pleased with that. Um, one thing here, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that, but I do have this little piece of wire here that's kind of hanging out. I'm going to trim that off. I really don't want that hanging out there like that. All right. There he is. Not too shabby. So the way that I'm going to position this guy is like this. Um, so because of that, one thing that I'm going to do, before I even mess with uh, more cloth covering these sections, covering some of those uh, other sections here, I want to put two little uh, brackets in here, one on each side, so that I can attach some fishing line. And he can be hanging from um, an entryway or a ceiling, anything like that. The other cool thing about what I have uh, discovered on the bendable wire, um, it's still bendable. So I can take these very gently and shape them a little even even farther so I can bend them into whatever kind of position might be a little let me see I might be fooling around too much with this but um, that's why this is a tutorial so that you can kind of follow along and see what's gonna work for me yeah check that out bendable wire now, I don't know if, uh, if you use the wire coat hanger, you still might be able to manipulate that, bend it a little bit more. I'm not quite sure, but that really worked right there. Um, so I'm going to flatten it out just a little bit still. Still got some work to do, but I just wanted to show you that. Um, they're still bendable, still pliable. So you can bend, bend it in any kind of position that you want, really. 
Um, all right, so next step, I'm gonna attach two little hooks on the back here. One more little thing that I wanna do here um, is that I wanna suspend, like I was saying, I wanna suspend this guy from like a ceiling or something. So he's gonna be kind of looking down and hovering. Um, in order to do that, I need to put some kind of hooks or something in the back. I'm gonna do two of them. Um, and you can use, there are a multitude of things that you can use for that. Um, you can use those little, uh, if you have any on hand, little eye hooks with a screw on it. Um, you know, put those right on in there. Um, you can even use something like this. This is a washer. Um, and you can insert them this way. That would work. Here's a different kind of a little hook here. Um, you can insert them this way and hook your fishing line through there. So one on each side. So any of those things would work. If you don't have any of those uh, and you do have some bendable wire, uh, you, can, you can definitely shape your own little round hook and insert those in there uh, using the bendable wire. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these little guys. I happen to have two of them the same size. So first thing that I'm going to do is determine uh, where I want them. I think I want them. And yes, I'm doing this before I actually... Uh, I'm doing this before I actually do any clay work because to get these inserted um, after you do any clay work through that clay uh, is going to be a pain. To help me out here a little bit more, I'm going to use my uh, my ruler so that I have them uh, angled properly. So I think I'm going to do put one right there. I'm just marking the spot. Put another one right there. That should be about even. I'm going to take uh, you can use a blade for this. I'm just going to poke a little hole in there. It doesn't need to be very big. But we do have some heavy cardboard in there, so maybe with a pair of scissors, the end of a pair of scissors, you can get down there, in there a little bit deeper. There we go, something like that. All right, after rummaging around in my junk drawer that I have here in my studio, I have all kinds of stuff. Um, instead of going with those, instead of going with something so small like this, because I really want it to be inside there, and this just isn't big enough for what I have on hand, I found these two little plastic pieces here. Um, I have no idea what they came off of or what they're for, but they have two uh, Openings where you can in insert something which I think will be perfect for some fishing wire This thing is about uh, the, They're two and a half inches long and I just cut a bigger slit and two bigger slits in the back Where I can really sink that down in there um, That's that's perfect. So if you could see that angle, I don't know if you can or not From the side there so that's eventually where I'm going to put my fishing line through. Um, but I've got to, to uh, hold them in, t in place temporarily. I've got my hot glue gun. I'm going to squirt some uh, hot glue in there to hold them in place temporarily. Um, eventually they will have clay around them and that will really secure them into place permanently. But for now, I'm just squirting some hot glue around them. All right, so with my fabric, uh, what I've already started doing is I've started cutting out pieces of the fabric, which are gonna cover up all the raw areas on my uh, bony, the bony structure of my wings. So I'm gonna take 
take that I've already started cutting and I'm gonna start applying this is the piece that's gonna go over this little area over here um, using the same uh, paste mixed with uh, the paint same method that we used for the larger front sections um, we're gonna do the same thing here dip it in there make sure it's nice and saturated um, the back because no one's really gonna see the back I don't really care too much about how it looks um, I just want those areas covered well without them showing uh, in the front so one little piece at a time is what I'm gonna be doing and that's what you're gonna do now you could instead of doing this you could take your paper mache clay and go over these areas with a thin layer of paper mache clay that would work as well um, so yeah if you wanted to do that instead of this um, that would work uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that the paper mache clay of course is gonna be a lot heavier than the cloth so it's going to add a little bit of weight to it um, so that's one thing to keep in mind but you definitely could do that so i'm going to continue on and uh, cover up all of these layers looks like i'm going to need to trim some of this that didn't lay flat so if you have some that are sticking up like that trim those off um, but that's what that's the next step just applying these strips of fabric all right, so I have applied my strips of cloth that were dipped into my uh, paint and paste mixture, applied them over any of the raw paper mache uh, areas that were still showing from the back. Um, as you can see, I didn't do the neatest job of it. Uh, like I said, uh, I don't care really too much about what the back looks like because no one's going to see it. This is going to be suspended from the, the a ceiling or something like that. Um, so no big deal. I just want to make sure that those are covered. Uh, and then afterwards when I got them on there, I uh, again, just like the front, I took my paintbrush, made sure that they're really saturated on there. Um, as you can see, I do have some ends here that are kind of overlapping. Not going to worry about that. I'll trim those off once that is dry. It'll make it really easy. Um, but we're at a point right now where these are completely done. Um, they've got to dry, obviously, again, they have to dry completely uh, before we move on to sculpting, which is going to be up next in our next segment here. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for part four of our paper mache bat tutorial uh can't really go any farther uh next segment part five that's when we're going to start sculpting these things get the sculpts completely done and then in the very last segment we'll do some painting and some ceiling but again thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one